Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today we had uh, an opportunity to speak to someone who is extremely knowledgeable in Islam. He chose, he is the one who decided to speak about something. And like supposedly he is prepared because you know he want to get Christian prince busted. And he did, he did really. No CP, let us see. Okay, let's talk about satanic verses. Satanic verses, no problem, here we go. Go ahead. I want to uh, ask you what the problem is with Muhammad uh, receiving the satanic verses and Allah abolishing what uh, he threw in. Okay, so you agree that Muhammad he received satanic verses? Uh, many of the majority of the scholars and the uh, fear say that this story of al ghanik is a fabrication. But you just said, but you just said, everybody heard you. What is your problem with the Prophet receiving satanic verses? Yeah, I do it because uh, Ibn Ishaq and uh, two other uh, early books say that he received satanic verses. All right. So, I, I, so ha, ha, can you tell me the story how Allah abolished those uh, verses? How Muhammad, he said those verses and how Allah abolished them? What do you mean? You, will he receive verses? What the verses? Uh, yeah, what he said about them? Uh, basically, um, he um, he was like uh, praising the uh, gods of the pagans, and uh, later on he said, "No, no, the the pagans were happy with it." And later on he said, "No, no, this uh, uh, is from Satan and, uh, and not from God." Hmm. Okay. And I want. Okay. So you agree with that? He agree that his prophet receives satanic verses not from God. He agree. Okay. And he is saying what the problem with that? Yeah, because it's in Ibn in, in Ashraf. Wonderful. The majority of the scholars and the say it's a revocation. Wonderful. My friend, we just heard all of you. What's your name, uh, your, uh, uh, if you might say, so I can call you? Mahdi. So your name is what? Mahdi. Mahdi. Okay, Mr. Mahdi. You are welcome. I'm glad you had to call me. You sound like a nice gentleman guy. Let us not to change the topic, please, one by one. You said you agree with the topic. You agree that the Prophet received satanic verses. But it doesn't say in the Quran that Allah, he said, can you make Quran like this? Right? Does, it, does the Quran say that? Ask me what the problem is with Muhammad receiving satanic verses. I'm telling you the problem if the Quran saying nobody can make Quran like Allah Quran. And Muhammad, he received Quran from the devil. And he did not recognize that this is not Quran from the devil. That means anyone can make Quran, including Shaitan. Yeah, because it was like the three verses. It's like meaning uh, one verse that uh, It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Muhammad, Muhammad, he thought it's a Quran. And Muhammad, he recited as a Quran. And the Quran says nobody yeah. can make Quran like the Quran. Yeah. So how the Prophet of Allah, how the Prophet of Allah could not recognize that this is not Quran? Yeah, because uh, Jibril, Muhammad saw that um, uh, he was receiving from Jibril, but uh, Shaitan, like he was uh, tricking him into uh, receiving this uh, verses. Guys, did you hear? Shaitan was a tricking Muhammad. So Muhammad is a fool. And what does that mean? That means Shaitan, it's possible that he is Jibreel. Because if he was do it, he was able to do it once, he can do it always. Correct? So now how we will know if Muhammad seeing Jibreel or seeing Shaitan? Listen carefully now. Your problem with the satanic verses okay, Allah. Okay, no problem. Listen. As long you are the one who agreed that Muhammad he received satanic verses and you heard of the story that Jibreel or Shaitan he came in the image of Jibreel right yeah. how and what is our guarantee that not all the uh, Quran is from a guy who came in the image of Jibreel and he's Shaitan what is our guarantee that the verse is saying that Allah will yeah. abolish the Quran which is from Shaitan is not from Shaitan himself because uh message of Quran is to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one God. Okay, hold, thing. okay, no problem, but you know, if you worship wrong worship, still you are not following the true God. As an example, you're a prophet, he, he kissed black stones, you Muslims, you claim that you are not pagans. <laughs> what, is, it, is that from Satan or from Allah, kissing black stone? No, he's doing that because uh, it's holy, 
from paradise. It's holy. Where did Allah say to Muhammad, it's holy kissed? No. Okay, why he kissed then? Because it's holy. Why it's holy? Because it's from paradise. Where it says that? It doesn't say that. So who said that to him? No, because uh, in, in the reality, it's holy because it's from paradise. Okay. That's the reason it's so if a stone is coming from paradise, that makes guys. It's reality. It's reality. It's a stone from paradise. Hello. So what? Is it a stone who is located in paradise? Is the same as a stone located in the earth? Both of them they are created by the same God supposedly. So what the big deal? This pagan religion, they worship any meteor fell down in the ground. It's a strange stone. So they take it and they worship it. Actually, if we go in the Hadith, you will find this. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Look what it says. Read with me carefully, please. We used to worship stones. And when we find a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the later. And if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth, i.e. soil, and then bring a sheep and milk that sheep over it and perform tawaf around it, the same as you do around the Kaaba, tawaf. It's a pagan practice before Islam. They go around anything they worship. Do you see it? All right, continue. Get holy. Yes. Okay, so when you go to heaven, you are going to kiss everything in the ground? talking about the earthly life what do you mean we are we are now uh, in the earthly life we are not in heaven so that's different well, what so what if it's a stone from heaven i mean it's a stone and kissing a stone will make you a pagan person let me ask you did this stone have a duty or it's useless uh, wh what what do you mean the stone, you see, we are talking about Muhammad receiving satanic verses, and obviously Muhammad, he received a lot of satanic verses. One of them is the kissing the black stone. So this wow. stone, is it useless or useful? If you touch it, then Allah, on the day of judgment, will uh, forgive your sin. Okay. Guys, if you touch the stone, Allah will forgive your sin. All right. The hadith says, if you touch the stone in the Yemeni corner... Did you hear it? Did you hear it? What is this? If you touch the stone, Allah forgive your sin. This is what they say to us, Islam worshiping one God and etc. Islam is nothing but a cult. Let us continue. If you touch the stone and the Yemeni corner, Allah, he erase your sin. How and why Allah will erase your sin for touching a stone? Because that's how Allah is making his creation. If he wants to do that, then he is going to do that. It's a decision. What, 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 it's a, it's a stone, you see, I mean, okay. how easy it is just touching a stone will make me lose my sin? Yes. Okay, why, 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 what is the logic in that? What, okay, okay, why, why, if, why, if you touch, explain to me, why if you touch the stone is going to erase your sin, what will happen exactly? Then, uh, on the day of judgment, the stone will, uh, uh, Allah will make the stone uh, rise and the stone will say to Allah this and this uh, person as such a person touched me hmm. and then Allah will uh, forgive him and allow him to enter paradise. That's wonderful. So the stone now became a meditator medit between the man and God. Is that correct? Sorry? The stone is going to uh, intercede for you. Yes. Okay, but isn't it the Quran says in that day there is no intercession? By his permission. Except by his permission. And the permission given to the stone? What are you talking about? He gives permission to the stone. He, <laughs> he gave a permission to the stone to intercede. If we go in the hadith, let us do that. Hmm? We will find the hadith saying, the message of Allah said about the black stone, by Allah, he swear, this guy is serious. Allah will raise it in the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speak. So my drawing was absolutely authentic. 
as the prophet exactly he said. No Muslim now can say, Christian Prince is fabricating how the black stone look like. Can you? So now we have clear evidence of what Muhammad said, and this Muslim, Muhammadan, he was agreeing, yes, the black stone is going to come in the judgment day. You do not need to be genius to discover that Muhammad is a pure pagan person. He adopted the pagan belief before him. He mixed it with some Christian teaching, some Jewish teaching, some Hindu teaching, some, uh, you know, uh, Sabian teaching, which, you know, stars, and then that is Islam. Yet they claim that there are people who follow Abraham. No, Abraham, he taught you there's stones, you kiss them, and they have tongues and eyes, and they will witness for you. This is what Abraham, he taught you. Hmm? Anyway, let's go back to the video and see what this gentleman, he is going to guide us to. I don't know how many of you at the end of this will uh, decide to become a Muslim. Listen carefully. So he gives permission to Muhammad. Okay. So the stone is the stone is a person because you are saying now the stone is going to speak and the stone is going to have a tongue and the stone is going to have eyes. Is the stone yeah. is a person? According to the Quran, our, our hands and feet will also speak. By the, and the, I, don't change the topic. Our... Is the stone because you said the stone is going to have tongue and it's going to have uh, uh, eyes? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The same for our Allah says in the Quran that our hands and feet will. Uh, on the day of just we'll, we'll okay. speak and maybe we'll maybe this is metaphorical, but the stone literally is going to stone to speak, no, correct? It is not it is not okay, metaphorical. not metaphorically, no problem. Okay, no problem. No, no. Guys, it's not metaphorically. So his feet, this guy he believe his feet is going to talk. It's not metaphorically. I was helping him. I, I was giving him a hand. His feet was going to talk. That's what he believed. So he said it's not metaphorically. It's true. So when you go to Allah, so now look, we have many witnesses. We have your feet, your hands, and your, this is not a difficulty, you know. Yeah. You know, uh, the Messiah, he said, this stone will witness for you. But he was talking about what? It's like, you know, everything around you will witness in the judgment day. You cannot run away from what you did and what you said. Everything around you witness, but doesn't mean that the stone is going to talk. The Muslim, they believe in that literally, not metaphorically. Now, different Muslim, he will call me, he will say the opposite. He will say it's metaphorically. Why? Depending on the Muslim, how honest he is, this guy is being honest. Let us see. Well, no, not metaphorically. So, the stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment. W witness to who? About what? Isn't Allah knowing all, everything? No, oh, my, my friend, that is very stupid of you to say. I can, like, raise 1,000 questions for you if you... No, we are talking about making satanic verses. What is my guarantee that this stone story is not from shaitan? Let me show you something. Did, did Omar al-Khattab, he say, that you are a useless stone, there's no harm and there's no benefit from you? Did he say that? He said that uh, if Prophet Muhammad would have not, not kissed it, I would have not kissed it. Thank you very much. But he said, he said, you are useless harmless stone yes or not it is not uh, useless did he say that he said you are you no know, doubt that you are a stone can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone did he say that or not uh that is very uh, that is not true it does benefit because allah will forgive you so you are saying Amr khattab he did lie no Okay, if he know, well, he said the hadith in front of me, and you speak Arabic. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's Umar ibn Khattab, that's not, uh, uh, that's not the Prophet. Okay, but if Umar ibn Khattab is saying something not true, it's a lie then. No. What do you mean no? Either you agree with him, or you don't agree. No, he, Did he tell the truth when he said that? Did he tell the truth when he said that this stone is useless? Yeah, he, he, he said that, but the Prophet ﷺ did not say that. Okay, so the Prophet contradict the Prophet teaching, contradict the teaching of Omar al-Khattab, correct? The Prophet teaching uh, contradict the uh, uh, statement and assumption of Omar ibn Khattab, yes. Okay, so Omar here was lying. No. What he was doing? He made, he made, his, uh, he made his own uh, assumption. Okay, how a person who is living in the time of the Prophet all this time, he thought that the stone is useless 
and now he is practicing kissing a stone, yet he knew it's useless. Why? How come uh, nobody? How come none of the Muslims says to him, "Don't say that. It's it's useful." Because the the stone it's literally a stone. It doesn't like it will benefit us. But Omar ibn Khattab wasn't talking about this benefit on the forgiving sins on the day of judgment. Hmm. He was talking about the uh, benefit of uh, that the stone is like a stone. It it doesn't do anything to. Okay, anything. hold on. He is saying, unless the pro because the prophet he kissed you, I'm kissing you. He is saying you why he is saying it's useless. Kissing you is useless. So this is about now and later kissing you is useless but you said the one who touched the black stone is going to witness for him in the day of judgment Omar al-Khattab is getting your prophet busted saying it's not true it's a lie it's just a stone no, no he's, he's making some assumption assumption so he is making false assumption correct his uh, assumption is not true no yeah, it's a false assumption. So let me let me go. So if we go in the Quran, it says that Allah. Do you notice he is he is struggling? He don't dare to say Omar is lying. But the fact Omar is not lying is saying the truth. This is a stone is useless. Nobody dare to say Omar was uh, telling a lie here. But Omar here is totally contradicting Muhammad teaching and how Omar became a caliphate and how Omar is a, is a leader and his companion and yet he did not know what Muhammad said. How Omar have wrong understanding. There's no way. Anyway, then we go back and then we talk about Muhammad. Let me move the video a little bit. Muhammad uh, is going crazy. Muhammad is going crazy. Let us see, maybe here. Your prophet, according to the Muslims, he was under the control of a black magic. Is that correct? Black magic is not shaitan. So what it is? It is uh, um, uh, magic revealed by uh, Harad and uh, Marut. It okay. Is, it is not. Uh, it has nothing to do with shaitan. Okay. So your God Allah, He sent two angels to open a school of Harry Potter. And they teach magic, but who is the one who will use? You are this. You are, you are the one saying that to me. Why you are laughing? Guys, he's laughing. I mean, that's what you're saying. Allah, He sent two angels to open a school in the Babylon Tower, like Harry Potter. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a god? He sent angels to teach magic. Hello. He is a god, <laughs> yet he is teaching magic. <laughs> And he, he sent two angels, their specialty, they have a PhD in magic skills, brother. And their name is Harut and Marut, look at the names. Have you ever heard of a satanic God more than Allah? I mean, what kind of God he sent two angels to teach what? To teach us how we can make a man and the wife divorce. Tell us more, please. Who is saying that to me? Why are you are laughing? Chapter 2, verse 102, it says, Allah, he sent Harut and Marut in the Babylon Tower to teach magic, correct? Yes. Okay. So they open a school of magic of Harry Potter in the Babylon Tower. Now, who is the one who learned from them the magic? The uh, uh, people of uh, Babylon, whoever wants to learn. Okay. Read for me, please. Chapter 2, verse number 102, it says that Suleiman is not a kafir, but shaitan. They are the kuffar, who they are teaching the magic. Does it say that? Uh, uh, can you show me? Okay, with chapter 2, verse 102, it's on the screen. You My can read. English is not good. No problem, here we go. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانْ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِلِ هَارُوتَ وَمَرُوتَ so who is the one who is practicing the bad magic on mankind? Is Shaitan. The Quran says that. So your prophet was controlled by the black magic, controlled by Shaitan. No, no, no. The uh, two angels uh, teach uh, magic, but um, Allah says in the Quran that whoever does uh, accept uh, teaching this magic, he will enter hellfire. My friend, does it say there that Shaitan? <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, Allah, he sent two angels to teach magic. And Allah said, whoever accepts teaching the magic, he will go to hellfire. <laughs> 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 so
So if you accept me teaching you magic, I will send you to hellfire. What's wrong with this religion? Am I lying? Uh, no. Okay. No what? No, wait. Uh, Habibi, uh, I will call you back in just two minutes. Let's move a little bit because he will come back and we want to hear him saying that Muhammad was a crazy man. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, thanks. so so my friend, uh, my friend Mahdi, thank you for calling yeah. back first. Uh, now, your prophet is under black magic. Black magic is what is what it is. Is it a, is it an evil thing? It is uh, like the end work of shaitan. Okay, it's a work of shaitan. That's wonderful. So by the work of shaitan. Muhammad was controlled. How Shaitan was controlling Muhammad according to you? No, no, black magic. It was uh, controlled. It was uh, con okay, was but the black him. magic. Why? Why? Like, you, uh, why? 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 It's, is it like, okay? Is this magic is good or evil? I'm gonna explain. It. If someone uh, wants to uh, use black magic, he can uh, use. He can like um, uh, make the uh, person they will. Uh, Use the black magic on crazy, or they can do whatever they want. They can like divorce uh, his wife. Okay, so you are saying that the the one who did the black magic to your prophet, he made him crazy. If you if uh, someone wants to, yes, but this the black magic only okay. lasted for one year, according to <laughs> yes, 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 he made him crazy. Yes. <laughs> mean the prophet become a crazy by the black magic crazy prophet for how long Muhammad was a crazy okay hold on so you're a prophet according to you okay my, my friend Mahdi uh, you're a prophet he became a crazy because of the black magic and you are the one who said they can make you crazy so your prophet became a crazy because of the black magic how we can trust a crazy man, as you said, to be a prophet of God? It was only for one. It lasted only for one year, according to Ibn Ash. It was only for one year. He is a crazy. <laughs> Christian Prince, what are you talking about? He was only crazy for one year. It's only one year, man. He was not crazy all the time. So now he is a prophet. And now he is a crazy. And he is going to Havana. Crazy man, crazy man, became a prophet. Crazy man, crazy man, crazy man, became a prophet. A crazy man, crazy man, a crazy man, became a prophet. A crazy man, crazy man, a crazy man. A prophet. Hey. It's official now. So I want people to, to take this recording and share it around. The Muslims agreeing that their prophet is crazy. But he was only crazy for one year. It's just one year, Christian Prince. Not much. It was only for one, it lasted only for one year, according to Ibn Shah. One, one year? Okay, one year, how many Quran he made when he was a crazy? Guys, our friend Mahdi, this is very important, he said, he was a crazy, Muhammad was a crazy for one year only. Okay, how many years Muhammad was a prophet in his lifetime? 23 years. 23 years. So we can say... Guys, we have to be honest here. I mean, come on. The prophet was a crazy only for one year. I mean, what a big deal. So he was a crazy for one year and he was a fool for the rest of the years. Me. Hmm. I have no comment. It's official. Crazy God, crazy prophet, crazy stone, crazy religion, crazy people. Huh? You see, when they say black magic, this is this is uh, simply uh, fiction. What black magic? Simply, he's a crazy. This is right. He was a crazy. In the old days, when somebody is a crazy, they don't know because he looked fine. You know, in the body, he's healthy. 
but he act he do stupid stuff, crazy stuff. So they think he was bewitched. So the Muslims agreed now that two things happened to Muhammad. He was bewitched and he was a crazy. And as long as they agree that bewitching is something evil and from the devil, that's mean Muhammad was controlled by shaitan, if you believe in bewitching. If you don't believe in bewitching, well, Muhammad obviously is mentally ill, and the guy he agreed, he said his prophet was crazy only for one year. What happened after the, at the end of the year? And not only that, he said to us, that, to us that Allah, he helped Muhammad, and he get him out from the black magic. But how? Listen carefully. So during the one year of Muhammad being crazy, according to you, how many chapters Muhammad he made? But he was crazy. Yeah. Um, when uh, Muhammad was under the influence of black magic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed two swears. Uh, one, I forgot the name of it. One is uh, Surah Al-Falaq, mm. which has five verses, and the other swear has six verses. Mm. The get up them has 11 verses, and... Uh, 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 Muhammad needed 11 knots because mm. the shaitan, uh, uh, he, there was 11 knots to break. Uh, 11 knots. The shaitan he made for him 11 knots. Shaitan he made for the prophet 11 knots. This guy he just said, it took Allah 11 months to open those knots. I mean, how powerful this God is. <laughs> Why Allah is so slow? Why it's taking Allah 11 months to open 11 knots? I can open them in 15 minutes maximum. 11 months to open a knot. This is a nutty story. I don't know what to say. It must be true religion. The Prophet was controlled by 11 knots. At the end of the day, we are here to share with you the truth. And the truth will set you free. Obviously, Islam is a stupid cult. And I don't think anyone he have a little honesty after all what you heard. Just today, you will believe Islam is not a stupid cult. You see, there's many cults, they are smart. But Islam is a stupid cult. Yet this is stupid cult accepted by many people. I mean, how that can happen? Very easy. Make people not to ask questions. Make them be afraid from asking the question. Refrain from even thinking about questioning then Islam is good. The second you start asking questions, Islam collapse. Uh, today's video is really important. I hope uh, people will download it, share it. Because at the end of the day, maybe now you learned, but there is somebody else who need you to save him. Most time they try to deceive youth, teenagers. You don't want your son to come back home one day and say, Dad, I want to be a Muslim. Or Mom, I became a Muslim. Why? Because you did not do your part. And if you think those things will never happen to you, you are mistaken, my friend. There's many people, they never thought that their kid will go to Islam. They go to school, they see Muslims, and Muslims are very well trained with the art of deception. So you need to help yourself. It's your duty to save your family. At least save your family. I mean, come on. There's millions on the internet posting videos, lying about Islam, including people who claim to be Christians. So your family, they are in a risk of deception. You heard the story of the guy from Australia who found suddenly a video on YouTube that his son, who is 16 years old, joined ISIS and he commits suicide bombing. How sad. 16 years old kid. They destroyed him. Literally destroyed him. Why? Because his parents, they did not take time to explain to him that Islam is a dangerous, filthy cult. So, it might be Islam is funny and is stupid, but Islam is dangerous. If you don't believe me, open your TV and watch. How many today, today only, they are slaughtered in the name of Allah? In Africa, in Nigeria, in Ethiopia, in, 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 in everywhere. 
I laugh, I make you laugh. It's a comedy, but this is a very sad comedy. So really I appreciate all of you, and I pray that the Lord always will be with us to help us to save the Muslims, to love the Muslims, and not to fail in the trap of hate, because hate is a trap. We don't want to hate them. We want to hate the devil, which means hate. Hate the hate. Love the people. If you listen to this guy who was talking to me, you can tell this person is very simple. He think he's smart. He think he's genius. He think he knew it. He think he's getting me busted. But the fact, it's a comedy. It's a sad comedy. This is the video we were watching. You can download the previous one if you did not get it yet. It's called Coffee with the Christ vs. Coffee with Muhammad. So I want to say thank you for being here, all of you. Until then, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Bye-bye.